Um, okay, last week uh, we dealt with the topic of the root of root, the root of disobedient. And this week we are going into the topic of the fruits of disobedient. I have four 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 lessons I want to do. First one was the root, and now we're doing the fruits. We're going to deal with the cost after this, and then the destruction of disobedience. So we have two more lessons after this one. But specifically, we're dealing with the fruits of disobedience. So. We're going to look at the scripture, and we're going to ask you to, since the projector is not working for some reason, we're going to ask you to read out some scriptures for me. And uh, our, our key verse is taken from Genesis 4 and verse 7. And if. Genesis 4 and verse 7. And that's our key verse. We find it, we can all read the verse together. Someone who find it, anyone find Genesis 4, verse 7? Good morning, my sister. Okay, can somebody read that for me? We haven't got a lot of time. Um, if, uh, if you had Genesis 4, four verses 7, seven yeah. if you had done the right thing, you would be smiling. But because you have done evil, sin is crouching at your door. It wants to rule you, but you must overcome it. Wonderful. Okay. So now we're dealing with the fruits of disobedience. We have dealt with the root, which we said the root began with, um, just to recap a little bit, when um, uh, Lucifer rebelled against God and wanted to exhaust himself above, above God. And um, we came to the conclusion that that's where disobedience started. That's the root of it. It's the root of it. It's a rebellion that began in heaven. So now, after the roots spring up, God, Lucifer was cast down, cast down into darkness. And then he was in darkness until we don't know how long the period that he was there in darkness because the Bible don't tell us that. But the Bible do tell us the time when God formed man. When God said, let us make man. When God created the heaven and the earth. And the darkness was upon the face of the deep. And he called the land out of the sea. And he did all these things, brought forth all the things that we see, animals of fruit. But when it comes to man, he took the dust of the earth and a form man in his own image. That's where we that's where we are, our knowledge of time starts. If time was before that, our knowledge of time starts then. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That's where our knowledge of time starts. Not saying that time didn't start before then. Because they talk about dinosaurs were living millions of years before man was created. We don't know. But our knowledge of time starts when God created Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden, so forth. So, at the time, the first, very first fruit 
of disobedient um, was when God gave Adam a direct order. He said, of every fruit in the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the fruit that is in the midst of the garden thou shalt not eat of it. Now that is, a, that is, that is an order. But also with the order came the consequence that if you disobey this order, you shall die. So there was an order and a consequence of disobedient to the order. So God didn't leave any stone unturned. He told him what not to do. But if you do do it, there's a penalty. So we find that the serpent, the Bible says the serpent was subtle. It can read Genesis after we've done the key, we have done the key verse. Now, now I want to look at the key verse a little bit more, please, before we move on. Genesis 4 and verse 7. And let me read it from my um, King James Version. I like the interpretation, actually, of that scripture um, from um, so my sister Rose read it. It's a little slightly different, but it means the same thing. It means the same thing. This is when there came the time of offering that they naturally there was a time when instinct tell you you want to give an offering to God and Abel was he had the keeper of the sheep and Cain was a tiller of the ground Abel bought the be- one of his best sheep to offer unto God. And Abel bought the fruit of the ground. Um, now, the Bible says God had respect unto Abel's offering, but unto Cain's offering, he did not respect. And obviously, when somebody favors you, you know it. The countenance. The countenance. If you're not happy, I can tell by your countenance. If you're happy, you have a jolly countenance. So obviously, when Cain and Abel before came before God, Abel, God showed a favorable countenance. And unto Cain, his countenance was not so favorable. So Cain knew that God was not pleased. Put it that way. Okay? And Cain was wroth. He was angry. Why I gave my offering and God not happy. He was up. The Bible says Cain was wroth. Now God said to Cain, as we just read, and I'm going to read for my King James Version. If thou doest well, for um, that is um, Genesis 4, verse 7, a key verse. If thou doest well, thou shalt not thou be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin light at your door, and unto thee shall his desire be, and thou shalt rule over him. Read that again for me, my sister, and from your version. Verse 7. If you had done the right thing, you would be smiling. But because you have done evil, sin is crouching at your door. It wants to rule you, but you must overcome it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So basically, God is saying that, Cain, what you did is wrong. You know, the Bible says without shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. Even though he was a tiller of the ground, he could have rectified himself. He could have found a suitable sacrifice which involved killing, a blood. That's what God wanted. And he provided the fruit of the ground, which was not acceptable. So God was saying to him, you've done something wrong. 
take a check on what you've done. Correct your mistake. So it's not that God loved Abel more than he loved Cain, but because Cain did not provide the right sacrifice, God was not pleased. And he told him clearly, you, you, you have to do the right thing. If you don't do the right thing, well, then evil, sin, disobedience, and all those characteristics will be at your door, knocking at your door. It will be there. It won't leave you. Unless you do the right thing, that sin will be at your door, and it will desire will be upon you. So you will have some. You will have a desire. A desire. You will have a desire. Once you don't correct it, so it's all about correcting. It just takes over, isn't it? The sin. The sin will take over. It's just all about correcting because you can't be going that going east and take the road to the west. No. You're going the wrong direction. So God wanted Cain to re- look into himself, correct himself, repent, and do the right thing, but he did not. Yeah. And because he did not do the right thing, because he did not turn around, because he did, all he had to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. Basically, uh, please tell me what I need. If you don't know, tell me what, what, what I need to do. If he's short of knowledge, then God will even tell him what he needs to do. But just to ignore, you know, sometimes you have children, you talk to them and they, 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 they ignore you. And you know by ignoring you, they're pushing themselves further and further away. And they're pulling themselves into trouble because they're ignoring you. They're not listening to what you say. You just, they're just a child, you know. And you know that they're not, they don't care. And they're in business with what you're saying. Even though you know you're trying to correct them. It's the same thing. You know, you say to your children, stay away from bad company. Yeah, no, me, it's a mama, I'm all right. I'm okay, you know, and I can take care of myself. And you know eventually bad company will draw him or her into trouble. So it's the same thing. It's a disobedience. So we see that he had the chance to correct himself, but he refused to. And therefore we see what happened. The Bible says, further on it says, Cain, talk with Abel. Now sin is there now. And sin is... Sin, you see, we have to think of sin, Virgin, as like a cancer. Yes. Sin is like a cancer. It starts somewhere in your body and it starts to develop it and it starts to increase. And thank you, that's what I need. It's spread. So that is the thing we can. Sin was at his door, but sin was like a cancer. Sin was like a cancer, it was spreading in him. And then. He said he saw Abel, and they were talking. The sin just controlled him, took him over, mm-hmm. kill him, kill his brother. So we see that is the, and I'm going to go into the consequence of disobedience, but I'm not, I'm not going to deal in that too much. I'm just dealing with the fruit of disobedience. Now I want to look at um, Genesis chapter three, verse one to six. If we can look at that, another fruit. This is they're talking about the fruits of disobedience, the fruits. Um, it spreads in different angles, different ways. Genesis 3, verse 1, um, 1 to 6. If somebody can read that for me, because the project. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Surely you shall not surely not die. But God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of this garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. For and, he, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the days ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as the gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to, her, to the eyes, and the tree be desired to make one wise, she looked 
took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave it also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So, yeah, no, no, no. So, we see where we see clear deception. Yes. And we see where we are drawn into something that looks good. Because she saw that it, it was pleasant to the eyes. And one desire. You know, so she's thinking about herself and how she could be better. You know, and she's not thinking about what God says. She's thinking about the niceness, how she can be, you know, how she's beautiful and how she's good for the eyes. So, the, because of that now, and then God did not say you mustn't touch it. So, sometimes you, 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 list, you say things and you're putting yourself in a hole because yourself is saying something that doesn't. So, she kind of saying something that didn't, didn't match up with what God told him. She just said, thou should not eat of it. And he said, she said that to, to the serpent that the God said, Thou shalt not eat of it, nor touch it. Mm-hmm. But when the woman saw that the food, sometimes the eyes is deceiving us. And the eyes is telling us, this is good. Mm-hmm. This is pleasant. Mm-hmm. And the eyes is telling us, this is, this is right. Mm-hmm. But we have to, over, we have to overlook the, what the eyes say and remember what God says. Yes. Because if she was looking at what the beauty of it, the fruits, and she was thinking about what God says and the penalty, then she wouldn't have done it. But obviously, sometimes it's like sometimes with us, if we're not careful, the flesh take over. And the flesh is showing us beautiful things, and we should not be thinking about gratifying, fulfilling the, the desire, the lust of the flesh. We should think about what God says. Because what God says is what is important. But can you see the ploy of the devil is subtleness? How he engages Eve into a conversation. You see, the devil will try. And this is where we will lose when we choose to engage in a conversation with him. Mm. Because what did he use? He used God. Did God really tell you not to eat the fruit from any in the garden? So straight away, just hearing the serpent saying, God, he was enticed to mm-hmm. this. And we see it even today, how false prophet would go around and use the word of God to draw in peace. Mm-hmm. This is exactly what the devil did. So if we give him that room, that space, at the time of day, that's when he will start. Yeah. But if we straight away rebuke yeah. him, yeah. he will have no space, nothing to go on. Yeah. That's what he did. Yeah. Eve engaged him. Yeah. And that's what he that's tried right, to that's do. That's right, that's right, right, that's right, that's right. Yes, it's, um, they said it, the serpent was more subtle, yeah. tricky, you know, slippery, slide, you know, I mean, he, you know, he, he, is, is, he knows how to manipulate. Yeah. And obviously he knew Eve was more vulnerable than Adam. He wouldn't have, if he had gone to Adam straight, Adam would have said, Tell you what to no, right. But he, he always chose the weaker vessel, which as we know, this Bible says, woman is a weaker vessel. So he knew stretch, it, what he was doing. He, he, had, he, had, he had the good strategy. And so he, he got it. So obviously we see by that, that was the first fruit. That was the very first fruit of disobedience. Why he didn't refuse it? When Adam off, when he offered it to him, after he knew the commandment and what God told him, why didn't he refuse what uh, he was giving it to him? Yes, but remember, Adam made a commitment. This is flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. Adam, Adam was attached. So, they were one. Yes. So because you have a wife and um, you know that if your wife come and say something or do something and tell them and it's wrong, so you're going to join in with her and do it before she come and invite you to do it. No, you shouldn't. So that, you shouldn't. But, but, but that's what you happened you in should. reality. You see, when uh, one sin and encourage another one, they're easily led by the one who is 
Well, this, this uh, serpent. Finish, so you say something. Well, there's a serpent that says, when you're married, you must live as if you're not married. In other words, do not allow your spouse to entice you out and lead you out. It's scriptural. There's a scripture that tells yeah. you, when you are married, you must live as if you're not a married man yeah. or a married woman. Yeah. It's not saying you I must agree. be disloyal to your I spouse. Agree. But you must not allow them to influence you because you must always put God first. I, I agree. God I agree. I agree. But, 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 but when we know the Bible says that Adam sinned, of course he sinned. But remember, this is like a domino effect, you know. This is a domino effect. Satan knew what he was doing. He knew, he knew that he could get to Adam through Eve. Not only because he could get Eve to sin, but he knew he could use Eve to get to Adam. He could get Eve to transgress, and then from Adam, from Eve, he gets into Adam. He could have said no. To he could have said no. Because God already told him, Adam. God didn't speak to Eve yeah. about not eating the fruit or touching the fruit. He spoke to Adam. Yes. So when Eve bring it to him, he should say no. Because I'm, I'm following God's commandments. Well, we don't. All right, let's face it. Okay, fair. God told him, the day you eat up his fruit, you shall surely die. Yes, but we don't. Listen, the Bible don't tell us everything, okay? It doesn't tell us everything. Maybe Adam resisted at the first. Maybe he said, no, we can't do this thing. I mean, you know, God said not to do it. And maybe by persuasion, maybe, I'm just saying, because the Bible don't tell us everything, maybe by persuasion, Eve persuaded Adam. Let's try it now. I don't know. The Bible don't tell us. But we don't know. However, the fact is that Adam did eat. And Adam, the Bible tells us that Adam sinned. The Bible, you know, the Bible don't say that Eve sinned. No. The Bible don't say that Eve sinned. Because God didn't give the commandment. So, so basically. Yes. Adam, God gave it to him. Yes, but I he think. Should, he should refuse her when she comes with it. I think Adam is as much responsible oh, as Eve. But he knew more than Eve. Yeah. He knew more than Eve. Yeah, than yeah. Than but that's why the Bible always says Adam. Adam but that's, yes. And therefore, he knew more than Eve. Yes. By what God says to him. So therefore, he should follow the commandment of God. Yes. Not because Adam is his wife and come to tell him that he should have some of it too. He but, should rebuke but her. But, but it's just like the sin of today. You have one committing a sin and they encourage their friend to go and commit the same sin. Yeah. And they have the mindset of knowing the consequence of committing the sin. So it's, it's their own mindset is weak. Yeah. And then the devil have taken over to, to deceive their eyes. Yeah. So that's why they're easily led because they said if you if you they always say a word, the company you keep, tell me what sort yeah. of person you yeah. are. Yeah. So it's easily led because you're following your friend. Yeah. But, you but, see, that's why uh, Adam accepted it. Because I, Eve is his partner. Yeah. Adam has an excuse. Adam has an excuse. But as yeah. I said, I think if the serpent went straight to Adam, yeah, he would he straight forward. Would it. But the yeah, serpent yeah. has a way of strategically yeah. working to get to whatever he wants. This is a beautiful you know, story. And it's, uh, you know, and it's good that, not in the sense that Adam sinned, but we can learn from it. Yeah. Because the actually Adam was given the commandment, not Eve. So that's why the Bible always say Adam sinned. It never say Eve sinned. Say Adam sinned because Adam was given. He was the one that given the order, so he should know better. But yeah, yeah. The commandment was given to him. He should have spoke to his wife. This is what's missing. But he did. He spoke to his wife. How would his wife know? 
his wife said that God said we must not eat of it. But, you know, but she had something in there. Sometimes you talk and you don't talk. Sometimes you may say something to somebody, but the emphasis and how you say it and how you emphasize. Maybe you might have said it in such a little way. Just like how you all, your perception saying maybe he may have. Yeah, yeah, we, yes, yes. Maybe he may have just washed over it, but not point out the significance and the seriousness of it. Because sometimes we do that. We just wish you wash it. And we don't emphasize the deep consequences of what could happen in a situation. Maybe even that. We could, we could always analyze. Yeah. What, yeah, we, we, we haven't got the, the full details. The day, if you know, it we, happened. Yeah. And God had a plan B. I was saying to Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, yes. So, so uh, you know, it just tells us that sometimes we must keep the word and the, of God in our hearts. Uh, because if we keep the word of God in love and we live in the word of God, then we will not be tempted to disobey. Because it's all about disobedient. And um, we see what happened to Adam. And that from that first fruit, from that first fruit of disobedience spreads many various fruits of disobedience. We see where Cain killed Abel. We see... The, yeah, so... That's what it started from the first. So it spreads, it spreads, it spreads. It's like a virus. It's a virus, yes. The whole world is contaminated, it just spreads. And, and how much it spreads, that's, that's the thing as well. How much it spreads. It spreads like a wildfire. Because you saw, the thing is. Those are the ones that get drawn into. Those that forget God's. Commandment and it's yeah, yeah, those yeah, are the ones yeah. that gets left astray. Yeah. Not the ones who so, stick by his commandment yeah. and be faithful of God. Yeah. And the consequence is hell. When you sin, you have he has you have no part with it. That's right. And his hell is your 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 destination. So you have to think uh, constructively and say, listen, if I commit this crime, there's a consequence. Of course. You know, and I want to go to heaven. So if you want to go to heaven, you're not gonna deliberately commit a sin because God is going to forgive. You, you with me? No, you don't no. deliberately do us commit a sin because oh God forgives. No, no, you can't That's, do that. that no. Is hell no. your destination? No. So, because of Adam's sin, we're all born with a seed of Just disobedience disobedient. in us. Yeah. And that seed of disobedience is at our door. Mm-hmm. It's not that it's far mm-hmm. off. It's right at our door. Mm-hmm. And it is in everything because of our human nature. It seems like most people would more follow, be led by the spirit of disobedience. And it's 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 a war. It's a war. It's a it's a war. The Bible says, as we were there, when it says that sin is at your door, and his desire shall be upon you, but you can rule over it. So. In, to, for us to rule over it, it takes effort. Yes, yes. commitment unto God. For us to 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 overcome mm. this seed of disobedience which we're born with, mm. which is standing at our door. You know that's why sometimes children are so disobedient because we are born with the seed of disobedience. We're born with it. It's in, it's endemic in us. We can't get rid of it. the only way we can get rid of it now is through the blood of Jesus. That's the only thing that can suppress it, destroy it, and commitment. And it is not an easy thing. And that's why the Bible says, God is the road. I think after you reach, after 60, 70 going on, I think you have a good concept about sin and what is right. And, you know, I'm saying, you, you do. No, you don't. You do. You, you see what happened? Because you, if you say you're serving God, you're going to be fearful of H- going H- against H- God. H has nothing to do with it. It is. No, it has nothing to do with it. No, I'm saying the, the knowledge that they should have had. By yeah. saying, I'm, I'm suffering of my life to, to God for so many years. Yeah. And yeah. presumptuous sin does come in to people. Presumptions does come into people, even today, because they walk away. They walk away from God's precepts and not living in the Word to, for God to guide them. Because when God is guiding you, you know wrong from right. Yes, yes. You, do, you, you know do. wrong from you right. Do. You do. 
So you, you can't but, say, oh, that would be submissive to the sin. Because we're supposed to resist the devil and he'll flee from us. So if we resist doing the things that we know is evil, God, you know, we're putting God in a high place in our lives. But, and he will direct us. Because when new sin comes, we are able to recognize it. Because he gives you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's what he does. But that's what to do with age. No, age but age does, you. I'm saying age, you're supposed to be mature as you go on. In you're, the, you're mature in Christ. No, but, in, but if you you're can, mature in Christ, you, wouldn't you be more aware of... Yes, if you're in Christ. Exactly. If you're, if you're, in, you're Christ, in Christ. I thought you were just talking generally. No, no. Because the root, the tree, the st- fruit of disobedience. Mm. You cannot have a, tr- a fruit without a tree. No. You cannot have a tree without a root. So basically it's telling us now that if we have disobedience in us, we also have the tree and the root. Yes. So what we have to do is to try to eradicate. Yes. You know, it's like you have a garden and you leave it there and you plant something there and if you don't weed it out, it's overgrown and then the weed will overtake the good thing. So for us to actually overcome this spirit of disobedience, we have to work at it. We have to work at it and we have to be weeding and cleaning all the badness that comes in us because it's at our door. And the sin is always going to be there. Yes, but I'm saying you're a child of God. Yes, yes. You know that. We look at Romans, let me just look at Romans chapter 8, verse 5, where we say, those who live as their human nature tells them to, have their minds controlled by the human nature wants, what the human nature wants. But those who live as the Spirit tells them to, have their minds controlled by what the Spirit wants. Amen. So, so we have a choice. Yes. That's always a choice. There's always a choice. He has a choice and yes. we must live that and it has to be seen, it has to be evident. Mm-hmm. We have a choice. You angry with your list, but your heart is far away. Yeah. We have to demonstrate that by our living. Mm-hmm. That's it. By choice, we have a choice to choose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why we read the scripture where, where yeah. God said yeah. to Cain, mm-hmm. if you do well, we want to be accepted. Yeah. God didn't love Abel more than he loved Cain, no. but he loved. He, he, he was respected no. to Abel's offering, but he was disrespectful. And uh, your, your appearance, your appearance here. If so, if your child speak to you a certain way, you're not gonna be happy about it. No. You, your countenance, and you know, your countenance will not be pleasing to them, no. towards them. Because they speak to you in a certain disrespectful mm-hmm. manner. Mm-hmm. And that's why the Bible says, honor your mother and your father. Mm-hmm. It is very important. Mm-hmm. You know, so if he showed that honor to God, he would have been accepted. Yeah. Can we, pardon? Yeah. <laughs> now, well, let's look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Of course, we're going to run along. We don't have much time. Sunday school is very short. Um, this is Genesis 6. I want to quickly run through this. Now, this is a time when... Um, Genesis 6, 7, 8. Somebody read that for me, please, quickly. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it's repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. How, 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 how different it is now, okay? Mm-hmm. The whole world was falling apart. Mm. And everyone was disobedient to God. Mm. I mean, they had nothing named love. They had nothing named peace. They had nothing, no no justice. Yes. But Noah yes. found yes. sight, yes. found grace. Yes. So, found grace in the sight of God. Because he did what he was done. So, was faithful to God. That's, he was not bearing fruits of disobedience. Yes. He was bearing fruit, uh, thank you, fruits of obedience. Yes. And that's why he found grace mm-hmm. in God. God favored him. Yes. God favored him. Yes. So it, it taught each and every one of us yes. that we can do it as well. Yes. We can find favor in God by obeying his word. Yes. 
the world has gone astray, the world has fallen apart, and God says, I will destroy the entire world, both men and women, beasts, and, and creeping things. So God was going to wipe out the entire creation. But he found one man. You see, so even though that one man saved the world, make a difference. So even though we seem to be few, God can find, God find grace in us. We can change. We can change things. We can change things. Because if we bear that fruit of obedience, so many are bearing the fruit of disobedience. The whole world is, is taken away. And that's why God was going to destroy the world, the entire world. But he saved Noah and his family. They were the only ones. Because so, I, I, yes, he preached for 120 years. Yeah. Obey God, obey God. And every time he struck the hammer, God, obey God, obey God. Obey God. And so, you know, they, they, they didn't care. They didn't care. That, yeah, but we found one man bearing fruits of obedience. When now the world, the whole entire world, are fruits of disobedience, everything, that's why it vexed God. It yes. grieves God. Yeah. God yeah. repented. Yeah. Because not, nobody yeah. wants to listen. Nobody wants to hear. Nobody yeah. wants to talk about God. Nobody wants to do nothing that God wants. Yeah. Nobody wants to obey nothing. Yeah. Nobody yeah. wants to do right. Yeah. Everything was evil yeah. in the sight of God. So nobody wanted to obey God. And God wanted to destroy yeah. the entire world. Yeah. But he found one man. One and he took him and said, bring your family. Build an ark. Yeah. And he built the ark. And he was preaching, preaching, yeah. preaching. Yeah. Obey God. You must obey. You must obey. You must obey. And nobody and listened to him. When he's been so uh, adamant to do God's will, and the rest of them seeing him making this art, you can imagine. Yeah. Was but they were mocking him. Yeah. And even they would mock us too. Exactly. Yes. They would reject you. This morning, when I was coming at the bus, I was, this lady was talking to me, and she said she's late for church, so I said, I'm late too. And you know, where they are talking about the Lord and you know, the goodness. Of, and this man asked me, well, I said, Well, the church is a church. Would I never put up with that? They said, What is church? And he started to say, He said, um, he said um, If there is a God, why so many things happen with that? Yeah, I said, sin. Because of sin and it's disobedient. Yeah. And he said, um, I said, I said to him, There is, there is a two choice. You have two choices. There is hell and there is heaven. Mm. And say, excuse me, the Bible said, the fool had said in his heart, there is no God. Mm. And he said, you know, and so we are going to church. He said, who? You who, who create the egg? I said, God who? He said, God wake up this morning. He said, oh, God wake him up. Mm. I said to him, he said, who wake up? You believe at your clock? Mm. Are you believe that you wake up yourself? He said, God wake you up. Mm. He said, do you know Marcus Garvey? Mm. I said, I hear about him. Tell me about him. I said, I can tell you about Jehovah God. Mm -hmm. That's he, right, that's he right. He said, it's Marcus God who is supposed to worship and serve. Now listen to me, brother, listen to me. You see, you see, because if we don't know the word of God, the devil will bring all sorts of things in our minds to divert us. All sorts. Yeah. I was just open up the bag. I was scared. And then, just like Eve, when the devil engaged her, sometimes you need to know when the devil is there to engage yeah. yeah. And you just yeah. leave it to yes. walk away. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it tells you problems. You know, that fool. Yeah. You cannot tell a fool about that. No. You'll be like banging your head against it. I'm just, I'm just you know, paraphrasing it. It's like banging your head against it. And you need to have that discernment of spirit. You just walk away. Because once you give the devil just a little step, he's going to stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you see. see. You cannot say no one didn't mention. You see. God's name. Mm -hmm. You know, that is it. So leave him with it. Let him go. Let him get I'm, I'm sure he's going to leave him. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. I think the foreign people was a foreign. But I just say, God bless you and I hope the you Holy see. Spirit will reveal that there is a God. You see, the way you speak is somebody that uh, most probably a lot of people have spoken to. Just by the way you speak. Yeah, so yeah. I would not have to 
even no, tell you. I just know it's an order. There's sometimes it's not profitable. It's not, right it's not profitable when you have to talk to people like that because you're not going to get in the way. You stand there for hours talking, yeah. talking. Um, because the devil, the, the devil has them yeah. in control. Yeah. That spirit of disobedience is in them. Yeah. They have so many yeah. things to tell yeah. They have so many things to tell you. And then I tell you. They have so many things to tell you. And they're not telling you nothing. And they themselves don't know what they're saying. There's a spirit of disobedience. So you cannot argue. You're not going to get anywhere with that. You're going to get anywhere with that. They don't call on the devil to help. They call on God. When they're sick and they're really sorry, you don't hear them saying, devil, help me. They say, God, help me. God, have mercy. <laughs> well, the thing is, we, we know this uh, because when people are really sick, unsafe people, and you offer them prayer, they very really, they will not, be, they will not accept it. They are aware. And they will say, Lord God, pray. For, you know, they will ask for prayer, mm-hmm. even though they don't believe in God. Yeah. So they, in that way, they contradict themselves. So they are aware that there is a problem. Yeah, yeah, they're not, they're not giving a heart. No. Okay, quickly, let's just go to Exodus, uh, Exodus 5, verse 1 to 2, please. Exodus 5. I think we've done. Somebody find Genesis 19, 15 to 17. I haven't read that one. Genesis 9, 15 to 17. Quickly. Genesis 19, 15 to 17. And Exodus 5, 1 to 2. You have to come. Yeah, Exodus 5, 1 to 2. And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh... That's Exodus 5, I'm reading. All right, Exodus 5, 1 to 2. Let's have that one. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, and they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And verse 2. Yeah. And Pharaoh said, Who is thy Lord, that I should obey his voice, to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Okay. okay, so now the commander, the commander in chief, given give Moses an order to go to Pharaoh. Strictly, it, not, it wasn't begging him. No, it was telling him. It was telling him, let my people go. Straightforward. Now, Pharaoh now is full of the spirit of disobedience. You have it. Cover head to toe. He's <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. And he's so, not giving birth. Yes. Yes. So, so some people, it's full of it. Put yeah. it that way. <laughs> so that, that is the thing, you know, that's what I'm saying, that this, this spirit of disobedience sometimes enters so. us, uh-huh. and if we allow it, it uh-huh. takes oh, over us. Completely. Completely, it, and we're just building. Sad, sad. We don't do nothing that's right, and everything we do is wrong. And it's a being. So Moses said, "Thus said the Lord, let my people go." It's an order. Now fear is saying, "Who is?" It's asking the question. Fear says, "Who is the Lord?" Who is the Lord? How, how fresh! No, that, 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 no, no. No, no, but it shows you now that there's a vast diff- gulf so between, between fear, fear and God. He don't even say, say who is God. Who is God? So he hasn't got a knowledge, a slight knowledge of God. Therefore, he can't be a single fruit of, dis- of obedience. He can't have a single fruit. Pardon? Yes. Who is God? He think he was the only big person. Yes. Who is God? So he didn't. He couldn't. He couldn't. Not even small like a fruit of obedience. He couldn't. He couldn't go. He couldn't. And God knew it. But God wanted to show His power. Who is God? He says that I should obey and let the people go. I know not the Lord. You know that's a bad thing. You know. That is destruction. You know. That when you say, I, I don't know who, I don't know the Lord. That is a destructive message. That is destructive. I don't know the Lord. Who is this? Who is this Lord? But God knew his heart. And God carried him along, carried him along, gave him plenty of opportunity. 
but because the spirit of disobedience prevailed in him, he couldn't do nothing. He couldn't do nothing. He couldn't do nothing right because he was swallowed up, pregnant. <laughs> it was that <laughs> disobedient. Not a single, not a single heart, mind towards God. But that is his own destruction. Because disobedient will bring destruction. And it's the wages of sin is dead. Um, okay, we're going to go to the last message. I'll cut it short. Galatians chapter 5, 5 19 to 20. Um, before that, Genesis 19, 15 to 17. Did you find a Genesis for me? Somebody find Genesis, Genesis 9, 19, 15 to 17. 17. Now listen to this one now. And when the morning arose, this is Sodom and when Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Please read for me, please. Then the angel hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take your wife and your children and your possessions, and flee to the Yes, please. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay there in all of the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be conceived. Okay, so this is when Lot went down to Sodom, and there was this. Um, Immoral, immoral, immorality going on in Sodom. And the Bible says, so um, um, he was vexed to his soul. Lot was vexed to his soul. What was going on in Sodom? So the, Abraham made appeal for Sodom. God said, if he found five there, he will save the city. So now the angel went down to Sodom and saw the disgusting behavior of the people. He was now what the disgusting behavior of the world. And God says he's going to destroy the city. Yeah. He told the slut to bring his two daughters and his wife. Yeah. But in verse 17 it says, It came to pass when they brought them forth abroad, um, that it came to pass, that the angel saying, And they brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for your life. Look not behind thee, neither Stay in the plains, escape in the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Now, the, 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 the command there was, look not behind you. <laughs> Don't look behind you. You're, you're escaping for your life. Keep your head in front of you. Keep focus. Where you're going. Forget about where you're coming from. But we see clearly that on the way, Lot, wife, decided to disobedient. That spirit of disobedience yes. was in her. Mm-hmm. There's a clear command. Yes. Look, look not behind you. Mm-hmm. Because if you do, you'll be consumed. Yes. Clear order. Yes. So it's so important, brethren, that we do understand the word of God. And that we obey the word of God. Yes. And that we bear the fruit of obedience and not the fruit of disobedience. Disobedient. Because disobedience will lead us to destruction. Mm-hmm. Disobedience will lead us to destruction. So we have to bear the fruit of obedience. Obey the word of God. But then we can't obey the word of God unless we know the word of God. It, we cannot obey it unless we know it. And we have to know the word of God. And we have to live in the word of God. And the word of God has the root. Take root. Not, not, not just be on top of our lips. But we want it to take root. Understanding. And as, as well as we have to root out those, those spirits, those thoughts of disobedience against God's will. And um, lastly, we're going to look, um, before we finish now, we're going to look at the fruits of the 
fruits of the spirit. Now it says here in the comments, the work um, Galatians five nineteen to twenty one. Galatians five nineteen to twenty one. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Yes. Which are these? Now the, the hold it a minute, hold it a minute. Uh, a comment is saying the, the works of the flesh is identical mm. to the spirit, fruits of disobedience. Mm. So the works of the flesh, the fruits of disobedience mm. are identical. Mm. They're the same thing. Not always. They're the same thing. Yeah. So the works now of the, the flesh. works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, Adultery fornication, fornication, uncleanness, uncleanness lasciviousness, lasciviousness, adultery, adultery witchcraft, witchcraft, hatred, hatred variance, variance, immolation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envy, Did you want to say something? Lasciviousness. Um, I'll give it. Let me give you. Let me give you the con, 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 um, correct in, interpretation of this. Lasciviousness is, is um, excess. It's excess. Ex- yes, anything, anything is an excess. Is lavishness. It's, yeah. So, um, yeah, we don't have time to go through all these fruits, but I mean, we, it's good that we know that these fruits are all stem from disobedience. So, the key word that we need to know is how to obey the will of God. How to live in the word of God. How to be accepted by God. By obedience. Obedience is the key. Obedience, the world is in a state right now. And the world is in big trouble. And it's all because of disobedience. If we read Revelation, see some other calamities that is awaiting this world. It will be hard to end in to even think about some of the things that's going to happen to this present world because of disobedience. Because, because yes, because because of disobedience, the wrath of God is upon this world. The world is in big trouble. The world is in big trouble. The world is in big trouble. Yes. Back for people, and the people we are in big trouble. I agree. It's but a serious. It's a very. People are in big trouble because of disobedience. Yes. The entire world. You know, because sometimes we use the, the word entire world. Some people don't get it. They think it's something for it. But when you say people are in big yeah, trouble. Yeah. Yes. 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 And the thing is, the world don't even know. To be honest with you, they don't know the danger. And that's the thing. When people are unsaved, they don't know. And, you know, you try to witness to them. You try to witness to them and you try to get it to them. But because the Bible says the the devil has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart. So the... The Bible telling in times as we are living in the end times, man's heart Yes. So even if you know, or if you see a backslider who knew God, who had a love for God, and you try to encourage them to come back, it's like they don't want to know. It's like they never hear of God before. So the devil have got them 
wrapped up, tied up, and put them and have a chain. Have them into his control. And they think to themselves, well, at the end of the day, they will be safe, but they won't be safe. No. Because no, it will be too no, late no, for them. No. Quite right. So it's not to say man don't hear about God. Man yes, they do. They God, do. They don't want to accept God. Yes. They don't want to accept The God. devil's planted all sorts of things in the heart of the unsaved person. To believe that many people believe him. That what I heard people say, "When I'm dead, I'm gone. I'm finished, and that's it." But they don't realize the soul. The soul cannot die. The soul cannot die. The soul is immortal. So the soul has a choice to go to hell or heaven. Exactly. And the soul goes back to God, and the body goes back to the dust. Do you have to finish now? Yes, as I was saying, to have um, an old lady, so she wanted to die. And when I said at home, well, you cannot die before your time. All you have to ask the Lord, the Savior, what? And she said to me, whoever dead and come back on them, so they got here. So after she did, I finished the picture. And I said, no, she said, we can't stand there. Yeah. Just like that. God help us. Yeah. We can only pray for them. We can only pray for them. Anyway. So